Okay, so uh, welcome to lecture number nine. And uh, so today we want to talk about a new topic. Um, so, so far we talked about uh, supervised learning and we did several examples. And today I want to start talking about reinforcement learning. And so I gave you two options to choose from last time on the Discord. And most of you voted um, for this topic. Um, but also the other topic, the unsupervised learning, I will also do an example uh, either next week or at the beginning of next year. Okay. So we talked about uh, the supervised learning for a long time and now I'll talk about this reinforcement learning. And this has a lot of application and I will give some examples. Uh, but personally, I'm most interested in this game AI thing here. Um, and maybe next time we will do an actual game, but maybe today it's uh, more like a stupid example I came up with. But I think it's an example where you can understand the, the theory behind this. And then later maybe we'll do some unsupervised learning stuff. So, so far, um, we just talked about um, these supervised learning. And what this meant, supervised learning, was that there was some supervisor, which were, uh, so we had some um, training data where we had some features and some label. So a supervisor assigned to a feature a label, and we had different examples. So, um, for example, the stock cat example, uh, I explained at the beginning, where someone says, this picture as a dog, this picture as a cat. And, um, and in this lecture, we, we did these examples here. So we started with linear regression and then talked about lo logistic regression and then naive base. And also in the homework too, you do the spam filter, which is an example of supervised learning. And then in the end, we did uh, support vector machines. And um, reinforcement learning is a little bit different. So there's not a supervisor anymore. And the problem with supervised learning is that this is not possible for any application, uh, for every application out there. So maybe you can think of uh, some e examples where supervised learning is maybe difficult. Um, so for example, if you want to build a self-driving car, or if you want to uh, program a robot uh, which can walk, so maybe this robot here, you can control the joints of the robot, but maybe it's really hard um, to train the movement of this robot by using supervised learning, um, because what are the, the features and the, um, the labels in this case? And maybe it's also really hard to, yeah, to, to find good training data for a, a walking robot. And also another example is maybe games like chess or Go, or maybe some computer games. So maybe their supervised learning is also uh, quite difficult um, because maybe in chess, uh, uh, I mean, you can feed the computer with some recorded games of some chess world championships, uh, but maybe this is not the best thing to do. And all these examples are good examples for um, applications where you should use um, reinforcement learning. Okay. So what is the, the basic idea? So instead of having a supervisor now, um, reinforcement learning, the idea is that somehow um, the program or the machine or the robot or the car um, is um, doing some try and error, and then it gets some rewards if it's doing something correct, or it gets some punishment if it's doing something wrong. And so, so the basic setup is that we have a so-called agent, and the agent what we mean by this is just our program or the machine or the robot. And this agent um, can do some action. Um, so for example, if you have a chess software, then it could move a piece in the chess board. Or if you have a robot, it could take, it could rotate one of its, its joint by 10 degrees, or it could take a step. Or if you have a self-driving car, then an action would be turning the wheel by 10 degrees. And then um, what the agent gets back after um, doing some one of these action is that from the environment, it gets back two things. So the first thing is it gets back a new state. So for example, in the chess robot maybe makes the move and then the environment would be maybe the, um, the other oppo opponent who also makes a move 
And then the new state, which the agent gets back, is a new state of the chessboard. And also, um, what the agent gets back is a reward. So, for example, um, if this move of the chess software is a winning move, then maybe it gets a reward because it won the game. But maybe it also doesn't get any reward. Maybe it gets just gets zero re reward when it's not winning or losing yet. And um, but for example, reward maybe sounds positive, but it can also be negative. For example, if you have this walking robot uh, and it falls over, then this is somehow a negative reward. Or if you have a self-driving car and it crashes against the wall after taking an action, then this would also be a negative reward. OK. So is this uh, roughly clear, this, this main picture here? Of course, we will do a few examples for this. So. Yeah, so, so this is the, the, the basic picture. And this kind of situation um, um, will be now mathematically described um, by a so-called Markov uh, decision process, where we have some kind of um, states. So you see here the word states. So for example, for the chess example, a state could be uh, different uh, board states. Um, and uh, we have the notion of an action, what so this is what we can do. And also we have this notion of a reward. So and all these um, objects are now get collected into this notion of a Markov uh, decision process. <laughs> and this here, of course, should be a P, sorry, uh, MDP. And what is this? So this is a tuple, a collection of information, uh, S, a, T, and R. And what is S? So S is just a, a set of possible states. So in the chess example, it could be all possible chess boards where the pieces are at all possible uh, places. Um, and um, A is also a set which is called the action space. So in the chess example, this could be moving piece blah to, to position blah. And um, T is a map. So maybe at the first sight, this looks a little bit complicated, but T is a so-called transition probability function, which is a map from S times A times S um, to 0, 1. And in an example, this will, clear, will be hopefully clear what we mean by this. But basically, what this means is that this gives a probability that if we are so if we have t of s, a, and s prime, so let's say s and s prime are in s, then this is the probability to go from state s to state s prime by doing a. Yeah. So some in in many applications, um, these probabilities will be uh, zero. And for example, in uh, in the chess example, um, these S's are the different board states of the chess game, and A is a specific move. Um, so if I make a if I have a some position and I make a move, um, then there are possible outcomes for the next state I get, depending on the move my opponent is going to do. So maybe in this case, most of the probabilities are zero because I cannot, because the oppo opponent can just move one piece, um, but some of them are non-zero. So this is the map T. And then there's this a reward function R, which goes also from this S, A, S, and this will get, will give us a real number. And uh, this is called the reward function. And what this is, is um, if I, so what is R of S, A, S prime? So this is the reward we get by doing action A at state S. 
and going to and we go to s prime yeah so for example uh, mm, uh, for example in the robot moving case uh, um, if I if the robot is standing and then it turns his knee by 10 degrees uh, and maybe falls down maybe s prime is the state where the robot is on the floor um, maybe then uh, this will get will be a negative number here okay so and the markov decision process is a collection of all these four uh, informations so if you look in the literature and look this up um, then these things are sometimes described a little bit differently um, so in, in particular, this um, transition probability here, often it's called P because it's some probability. Um, and also you see, because this is a probability and um, this should satisfy some conditions um, because if I fix S and A, then the sum over all S prime here, I mean, if I sum over all prob probabilities starting in S and A over all possible S prime, um, then this uh, should be one. I mean, if, if the set S is uh, finite. So what this actually is for a fixed S and A is a so-called uh, probability distribution. Um, but um, maybe for those who didn't have some um, probability before, uh, don't worry, this is not so important, but I want to, if you look in the literature, maybe this word comes up. Um, so if you fix an S and A, then this TSA is a probability distribution on the set S. So this here can be seen as a probability that we go into the state S prime, um, assuming that we are in a state S and taking the action A. So in a lot of books, you will find this notation here instead of this. But I think it is uh, easier to understand if, I, if one thinks about this as a map from SAS to zero and one. Yeah. Okay. And um, so let's do a really simple example of, of this uh, Markov decision uh, process. So, so I found this here. So I didn't create this. I found this in the internet as an, a simple example. So here um, we have a robot car and the goal is to travel far and quickly. And so there's three, three states uh, of this car. So the car can be cool, warm, or overheated. So in this example, S is a set of three elements. Um, so maybe let's call them, or maybe, yeah. Let's copy this here. So S is a set of these uh, cool, warm, and overheated. And what the robot car can do is either slow down or maybe increase or going fast. So there are just two actions it can go. It can drive slow or fast. So in this case, the set A has two elements, just slow and fast. And um, this transition probability function and this reward function is now explained in this picture here. So for example, here we are in state cool and, um, and what this arrow here means is that um, we um, do action slow. So we are in state cool and do action slow. And what this here means is that um, the transition probability of going from a cool state by driving slow and ending up in the cool state is one. So this number here is what we denote by T of, so here T is a function of three things, state, action, and state. So this here is T of cool, um, slow, cool. So the probability that I end up in the cool state by driving slow when I'm in the cool state is 
one here. And, um, and the reward is indicated green here. Um, so the goal is to drive far and quickly. So if I drive fast, um, the reward is two. I mean, this is just an example, but the idea is that if I go faster, then I get the reward two. And if I go slow, I get reward one. So in this case, we go slow, so we get the reward one. So this number here, um, this is R of cool, slow, cool. Okay. And now, um, if I'm in the cool state and I drive fast, so then there are two possibilities. Um, so with a probability of 50%, I will end up in the warm state and with the probability of 50%, I will stay in the cool state. So for example, this 0 0.5 here is T of, I go from cool and I drive fast and I end up in the warm state. So this is 0 0.5 and this here is, um, I. Um, I'm in cool state, I drive fast, and I end up in the cool state. Yeah, and then here this two is a reward, so this is an R of cool, fast, warm, and this here is R of cool, fast, cool. And similar, if I'm in the warm state and I drive fast, then by probability of 100%, I'm in the overheated state. And then the reward I get is minus 10. Yeah, so you see that um, somehow um, what we want to, I mean, the end goal will be to find the, the correct actions we, we should choose in a given state and um, to fulfill the goal. And the goal in, um, here is to get as much as rewards as possible. Um, so we will later talk about the so-called optimal policy and then in this example here, it's quite clear what, what the best way is. So of, for example, every time we are in the warm state, uh, we should drive slow. And maybe every time we are in the cool state, we should drive fast. Um, and then you, you can see that, uh, that this will then give you uh, the most uh, reward in the end. <clears throat> okay, are there questions for this example? So in general, um, if we have a um, Markov decision process, um, so what, what are we going to do? So what is the dynamics of this system? Um, uh, so we will start in some state um, S, S0. So this will be some state. Uh, for example, in the car example, S0 could be the cool state. And then um, we start uh, driving so after starting in a state, um, we will choose an action, for example, driving slow or driving fast. And then the environment uh, will give us a new state with a certain probability. So we will get a new state S1 with a probability um, T S0, A0, S1, because this here is a probability of going to um, state S1 after being in state S0 and applying action A0, and then we get some uh, reward. And then uh, we will do this again. So we will choose again an action. Uh, then we will get a new state and also some reward. And maybe, depending on the context, uh, maybe there will be some terminal state. For example, in the car example, the overheating state could be a terminal state. So there we end. Or maybe after a fixed number of steps, or after reaching a certain goal. Um, and I mean, clearly the goal is to somehow choose these actions in a smart way. So we want to choose these actions, A0, A1, A2, and so on, um, such that the sum of all the rewards we get uh, gets as big as possible. So we want to somehow maximize um, this sum here. Yeah. So this is the sum over all rewards. 
um, we get by starting in sum S0, taking action A0, and then we get a new state. And then after this, we take a new action and so on. <clears throat> and so now there, um, there's a small problem here. Um, so if we don't have this, this terminal state here, and I mean, there are also applications where there's no terminal states and also we don't stop after a fixed number. Um, we see that this sum here maybe doesn't make sense uh, because it's an infinite sum. Um, so what one introduces usually is a factor here called the discount factor um, to somehow make the sum convergent. Um, but also this discount factor uh, makes sense um, uh, as follows. So first of all, so there's a problem that this sum here maybe gets uh, too big. Um, so usually, therefore, one introduces a so-called so discount factor, which is now a number uh, between 0 and 1. And also in some sources, uh, you see that they exclude uh, 1 here. <coughs> and um, instead of considering this sum here, what one considers is um, this discounted uh, reward function here, um, where we take the sum over all the rewards we get, uh, but at time j, we uh, multiply with this factor a gamma to the j. And, but this also can be interpreted in another way um, by saying that if you start somewhere uh, that somehow the, uh, the immediate rewards um, somehow gets a higher value. And if there's the reward, which takes a long time to achieve, maybe also gets um, discounted more. So if this number here is smaller than one, then the later rewards uh, get a higher discount. OK. <clears throat> so and as I said, the, the goal um, is to choose the right actions. And so for each state, we want to choose a good action. And doing this is called uh, a policy. So a policy is a function, which is usually denoted by pi, um, which is just a map from the set of states um, to the set of actions. Yeah, so for each state, um, we, we get an action, and this is called a policy. So this is somehow the strategy of the machine or the robot, um, what it will do when it's in a certain state. Um, so the question here is, um, I mean, for a given state, um, doing an action, there are possible outcomes with different probabilities. Like in the example with the car, it's either, um, let me go back to the, so for example, if we are um, in the cool state and we do fast, then we are either end up in cool or warm. And the question is, um, uh, because there are different outcomes, which one uh, do we choose here? Um, so I, I don't say that we choose anything here. So in, in a real life application, if we do an action, then the environment will give us one of these states. Um, so I mean, in the chess game, if I make the first move, um, this will be my action. And then the environment is the opponent. He will also make a move and will give back so, um, a new state. Um, so of course, there are different probabilities for his movement, but in the end, he will just give me one, um, one state. So here, this is really, uh, I mean, the environment gives us this fixed state here. It's, uh, yeah. Okay, so, um, so again, we, um, the goal is now to, um, to somehow find this good uh, policy here. <clears throat> and um, for this, um, we need to introduce a, a few notations. Um, so maybe this formula now looks a little bit complicated, but uh, there's a really simple interpretation of this. Um, so if we have a policy, so maybe this is just a way of uh, choosing actions if, if we are in a given state, then one can define the so-called value uh, of a policy pi at a certain state s. 
And this is called um, by V for value of this policy pi at a certain state S. And what this expression here means um, is that this is the expected value um, of the rewards we get um, in the future. So this here states that um, this expected value of this sum here, um, so this is the sum we, we saw before. So if we start in sum S0, so here we say S0 is the given S, then this expression here um, gives the expected um, total reward we will get by starting uh, in this state. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, so maybe don't worry too much about this, this formula here. The interpretation is really um, that if we have a policy, so we fix a policy, so a way of choosing actions after, by giving a certain state, then um, this function here will say um, somehow, if we start in some state S, then it will give um, the possible total uh, reward we get in the future by starting in this S. <clears throat> yeah, where at each time here, so if we are in some state SJ, then because we fix this policy, then we will always do the action pi. Oh, this here should be an S, sorry. So this here is pi SJ. Because every time we are in state SJ, we use this policy um, to choose the action. So the action we choose here um, is S pi of SJ. And then we will end up in some SJ plus one. And uh, because uh, this is the uh, uh, somehow random, um, we are asking for the expected um, value of the sum. So therefore, this, this goal we had to find the optimal policy um, can now be made a little bit more precise. So because what we want is that this value here at each state is somehow uh, the best possible. So we want to maximize this here. Yeah, because no matter where we start at which state, at any state, uh, we want the policy in such a way that it always guides us in the right direction. So, so therefore we can use um, this, this function here to define what we mean uh, by an optimal policy. So an optimal policy, which is often denoted by pi um, asterisk here or pi star, so this just means that this is somehow the best possible choice of pi. So a policy pi is called optimal if it's maximal, if it has maximal value for all possible states. So it, it satisfies the property that for this um, optimal um, policy, the value at the state S is the maximum over all possible poli uh, policies um, of these values of these policies, yeah? So this just really means that this pi is somehow the smartest way to, to choose actions um, in this, um, for a given state. Yeah, so for example, in the car example, um, it's quite easy to write down what the optimal um, policy is. So a policy, again, is, an, is, an, is a function from S to A. <clears throat> so in this example here, I just need to say um, what is S, uh, what is pi of cool and what is pi of warm. Well, in overheat, it is also a state, um, but actually it's a, a terminal state. So when we are in overheated, we actually cannot do anything so the only important thing here is really um, to say what is the value of pi cool and the value of pi warm. <clears throat> and But we already discussed that if we are in the state cool, so the, um, the best reward we get is by going fast because then we get two instead of just one. So in this case, pi of cool is fast. 
because every time we are in, in the cool state, we should go fast. But if we are in the warm state, um, we should go slow uh, because otherwise with, uh, with 100%, we would go in the overheat state. Um, but if we take the cool uh, as a slow one here, then we will either stay there or go to the, to the cool state. Yeah, so in this case, the, the optimal policy for this car example is defined um, by this here. Okay, and pi star of overheated, uh, we can set at any, at anything. Uh, but uh, this is a terminal state, so we don't really care. And now, uh, so now we will come um, to the uh, to the Q in what we will do in Q learning. Um, so first of all, we define what we mean by this optimal and um, policy. And now um, there's the so-called state action value function, uh, which is denoted by Q, where this Q here um, stands for quality. And this is a function um, where the input is a state and an action. And uh, what this function gives us is the expected um, total reward um, by taking an action A when we are in the state S by choosing the, the optimal policy. Yeah, so, so first don't look at the formula. What this number here gives, the Q star SA, um, is somehow the best possible reward we get by choosing the action A when being in state S. And by the, um, by the notation we introduced, um, what this is, um, so first of all, if we are in state S and we take action A, then um, we know that by a probability of T S A S prime, we get the, the reward R S A S prime and then we can take the sum here over all um, S prime. So this is somehow the, the expected reward we get by choosing this action A in the state S. Yeah. So for example, in the car example, this term here, if S is the cool state and A is going fast, um, then here we have the term uh, 0 0.5 times two plus 0 0.5 times two. And uh, because by a probability of 50%, uh, we get a reward of two. This is going to the cool state again, but also with the 50% probability, we get reward two by going into the, the, the warm state. So this here in total gives them the, the expected reward we get immediately after doing this action A. But then, um, we also have this term here, which takes into account what comes in the future. Um, so first of all, we have still this, this factor here. So this gamma is just um, as before this, this discount factor. And what this here means is um, that by uh, this probability here that we landed in the, in the state S prime, the best possible outcome we will get afterwards is given by this a value here of this optimal policy, right? Because this is the value the best possible value we can get by starting in some state S prime. And therefore, if we are interested in what is the best possible reward we get by starting in state S and doing action A, then we get this immediate um, reward. And in the future, the best possible thing we get is by these probabilities, um, by going into the state S prime, then we get the best possible reward starting in S prime. Yeah. So therefore this, the interpretation of this number here um, is really, if we, are have, if we are in state S and we take action A, then this is the possible and total reward we get in the future. Yeah. And what the goal is now 
I mean, the total goal is to find this optimal policy. And the strategy we are going to do is that we will try to approximate this function here. Because why, why does it help us if we know this number here? Um, because let's say we, we are in, in some state S and we know all the possible values of this Q um, star S A for this S, then um, how do we find the optimal policy where well, we just check what are the values um, for different A's and then for the value A um, where this is a, the, the highest number, then this will be the action we want to take. Yeah. So the statement is that if we know this function here, then we can get back the optimal policy, which we want, because this is this explains us what we should do in a given state. And the value of this optimal policy in a state S is exactly um, this function Q, Q here at this S and for all possible A. And, um, and what this here means is, um, so maybe you know what the maximum means. So this would give the value and the arc max doesn't give back the value, it gives back um, the A for which this here is the maximum. Um, so for example, uh, so if I have a function, let's say this is F and at one, this has value two, then the max over all possible X of f of x is two, because the maximum here is two, and the the arc max of f of x is one, because this tells us where this f of x has its maximum, and that's why it's called the arc max, the because for which argument is this the maximum here, and therefore in this case here, if we fix an s then this argmax here over all possible actions will give us the action such that this value here is maximal. And then this will be uh, exactly our optimal policy because this function here, this Q, this state action value function uh, exactly tells us um, what the possible future reward is after taking action A in state S. And therefore the best possible policy um, at, um, at the state S is the one where this value of this function here is the biggest, so for this A. Yeah? So maybe um, this can be quite confusing at the beginning, um, but it's, do you, are there any questions on this function and on this here? So here really what is just important is um, to understand this interpretation here. So this here is a real number. So if I can plug in a state and an action and this number tells, this gives me a number and this number is the best possible reward I can get by taking action A and S. And then it, it looks also in the future. So it, it takes into account if I take the best steps afterwards, then I will get in the end, it's possible to get this value. And therefore, if I know all these values and I'm in some state S, then of course I can look at this value Q S and then compare for different A's these values and then see which one of these is the biggest and the corresponding A is then the action I should take because this way um, will give me the, the highest chance to, to get the, the biggest reward. Okay. And this is what we want to do in our example. We want to um, model or we want to learn the values of this function here. Because if we know these values we also know what to do in a given state because we just look at this value and check for which action is this value the biggest. And this is then what is called Q learning. 
So what we are trying to learn is this function Q, um, where this Q stands for quality. So it's uh, the quality of the move A in a given state S. So what we want to find is um, for all S, for all states and all actions, we want to find a function. So we want to find a value <clears throat> which maybe gives a good approximation of this um, Q star, so the best possible. And what we will do, the algorithm is, well, first of all, uh, we make an empty table with possible values. For, for each state S and for each action A, we define this function to be anything. So for example, we could say that these are zero um, for all states A, S, states S and all the um, action A. And then um, we start in some state S0. And now um, we need to decide what is the next action we take. And for this, um, we look now at our, um, our current function we have. Well, at the beginning, that's quite boring because maybe everything is zero. Um, but anyway, we take the value, we take the action A such that this value here um, is the biggest. So maybe at the beginning, we can choose any A if we set everything to zero. Um, but later, if there are more values in there, uh, this is more interesting. Anyway, we, we take then um, the one where this value is the biggest. So this gives an action A. And then we just do this action. So um, we apply this action and then the environment will give us back a new state and also a reward, this R0. Yeah. And then what we do is we update this value of this function at um, the state S0, so the one we started with, and um, the action A0, so the one uh, we choose here. And what we do is, um, so first of all, there's again a learning rate um, alpha, which is a number between 0 and 1. And this learning rate somehow tells us how um, how fast do we change our opinion on this value of Q? Uh, because we see here, um, we take the current value of our Q at S0 and A0 um, times the factor one minus alpha. So if alpha is zero, uh, then we just, we don't do, we don't change the value at all. Um, but if alpha, for example, is one, uh, then we forget the current value. And with a factor alpha, um, we take this value here. So the new value is, um, or the value we add with a factor alpha is the reward we get. And we look uh, into the future a little bit. So we look um, um, at the next state. Um, what is the, the maximum value um, of this um, Q function for the next state? Um, so here we, we, we got a new state and we look at this state and consider the, the value of this Q function for each um, action, which then somehow gives the best possible reward in the next step. And this um, we take um, as a sum in tier and also with this, this discount factor here. Yeah. And this will be our new value um, for this um, Q S zero A zero. Yeah. So does this make sense? Um, so for example, if um, uh, if the reward is big, the one we get from the environment, um, then also what we add to this, the value of our Q is big. And for example, also if the if in the next step afterwards, um, there's maybe a big reward, then also um, our Q here should be big because from here, we can go into this new state S1. So anyway, um, after this step, we have an updated value for this here. And then we check if this new state S1 is a terminal state. And if not, then we go back to step three. Um, because now we, we choose a new action, A1, and we check now um, in which direction would we get um, the, the highest outcome. 
So we check what is the argmax of A now in, in the state S1. And then the environment will give us a new state S2 and the reward SR1, which is um, S1, A1, S2. And then we update the value S1, A1 with the same formula uh, by replacing uh, these numbers by the new numbers. Yeah. And then um, we will check again, is S2 a terminal state or not? And if not, then we go back here. And at some point, um, we will end up in a terminal state. And, and this whole thing here is then a called an episode. Yeah, and, and what we want to do in this algorithm is go through many episodes. And um, so we try an error uh, um, and um, update these Q more and more. And then we will see that these values for Q become uh, better and uh, better. Okay. And so there's now a, a small improvement we can do here. Um, because um, here, for example, at the beginning, we set these um, the values of Q to be really um, bad uh, because we don't have any information at the beginning. So what one can do also here in step three, instead of um, choosing the value out of the, the current values, um, we can also try to um, risk, uh, to take some risk and maybe just choose a random action. Um, because with this, um, maybe here we uh, have some bad choices and maybe we will actually not find the right direction. Um, so therefore one can modify this a little bit by introducing um, uh, another factor epsilon, which is an of sometimes called epsilon greedy algorithm, which is the following um, modification. So in step three, instead of taking um, the currently best choice for an action, um, we choose randomly an action with a probability epsilon. So either we, we go this way here, or we just say uh, YOLO and we just choose uh, one action randomly uh, with a certain probability epsilon. So if epsilon here is zero, then it's just um, as before. But if epsilon is maybe 50%, uh, um, then I either um, choose my current values of Q or I, I try something new. So I do some exploration and maybe come up with new strategies um, which are much better than the ones coming from the queue. Yeah. Okay. So are there any questions on this before we go to an explicit example and implementing this? And then maybe you will see the outcome is um, quite nice. Okay, so maybe uh, let's go directly. So the example I want to do is the following. Um, so the this uh, the setup is that you are you have a, comp uh, a robot or yourself, and you're on campus and you're hungry, and you want to find the next uh, combini. Um, but there, so. Um, so in this case here, so this is the Nagoya University campus. Um, so on the campus, we have three family marts. Um, so I should say that here is north and here is west. Um, and here is maybe the, the street to Motoyama. So you know there's a, um, a family mart near the Islas building. Here's a Lawson, here's also Oh, sorry, here's, here's the street to Motoyama. So there's a family mart near the station, the Lawson family mart, and also on the other side of the campus, there's a family mart. And so these green positions are combinis, and the red positions are uh, maybe some lecture halls, for example, here, Eilers building. Some of you have the math lecture there, and maybe here, a Japanese course, and here's the math building, and maybe there's some, I don't know, engineering or something. And the goal is, um, so there are four types of action. You can go 
right, up, left, and down. And the goal is to find the shortest way um, to the next combini. But what you don't want to do is you went, don't want to end up in a lecture hall. So for example, if you are here, um, the shortest way to the next combini would be uh, maybe left, 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 down, down, and left. And then this would be the shortest way here. And the rewards, um, so for each step taken, so if you reach a combini, you get one point. If you reach a lecture hall, it's a minus one. And maybe making a step um, is minus 0 0.1. Uh, because the idea is we want to find the shortest way. So if you run in, in, in circles here, um, then this is not as nice as going directly uh, to the next combini. Yeah. So, um, so, and what we want to find is now the optimal policy. So at each state here, so each thing here is a state, um, we should find the best action. So at each of these states, um, we should have an error showing in the right direction. Yeah, and for example, one possibility of, the, of an optimal policy can maybe look um, something like this. Um, so you see here in the picture that no matter where you start, if you follow these things, then it will always give you the shortest way um, to the next combini, and it will not end up in a lecture hall. Yeah. And to create this, I want to now go through this Python code, which implements this Q learning um, to, to create, to find this optimal uh, policy here. But first, are there any questions on this example here before we go into the code? So in the code, um, the main part will be to implement um, this formula here. So what we will need to create is uh, it, an empty table for these values. Um, so for each state S um, and for each action A, we will have um, um, a value, um, a real number. So in our example, we will have an array of, uh, so combini lecture example, we will have an array of, uh, maybe let's write it, eight, times seven times four uh, values we will need to save because for each action for each four direction and for each state um, we will need to save a number okay so so the link of this notebook is in the chat but also in the in the uh, discord and also on the home page well so first and um, what I do here um, I just Define the, the the number of uh, x states and the no, the number of positions for the, the y, and here I, I just save these uh, positions of the combinis and the position of the lecture. And now the Q, what I said is this this table we want to fill, and this is now um, an array of seven times eight times four. Um, and for each of them, we, well, here we start by saying these are zero and uh, we can define a function which fills these Q with zeros. But also if you remove this one here, then for example, we could start with random values, but maybe let's start with zero at the beginning. And then um, we will start, we will define some learning rate. So learning rate of 0 0.1 means that by 0 0.9, we take the, the old value of Q and just by a factor of 0 0.1, we take this new value, which consists of the reward we get and plus the gamma times um, the next possible maximum um, reward. And then there's this discount factor, um, which um, somehow tells us um, how important the, the future um, rewards are. So if this gamma is one, then all future rewards have the same weight. But if, if gamma is, for in this case, 0 0.6, um, then 
um, the next reward just is has a factor 0 0.6 and the next one has 0 0.6 squared and so on. So if this is smaller than one, this just means that Im immediate rewards uh, get counted more. And for this epsilon greedy, um, I take 0 0.9. Um, I think in the slides I did it the other way around. So by this, I mean that by 90%, I choose the current value we have in the queue and by 10%, we just take a random action. But this we will see in the code. And now I write a function, a run episode. Yeah, so this is now this, this algorithm, one, one episode. And what we do is we start um, with some state. And what this here does is just, it chooses a random position um, on, the, on the campus. So this here just gives a number between a zero and in this case, um, seven minus one. So this is a number between zero and six. And this here gives a number between uh, zero and seven. So therefore this will be then a random position on the board, uh, on, the, on the campus. And now we run um, the following code as long as we are not at the conveni or not in the lecture position. So, I mean, in Python, this is quite nice to read. So as long as the state is not a convenient position uh, and this is not a lecture position, we do the following code. And now the first thing is that we now either take a random action or we take the action, which um, is the currently best one according to our current queue. So this is this epsilon greedy algorithm. Um, so this number here is a number between a zero and a random number between zero and one. And here I check if this is smaller than epsilon. Um, so this just means um, that by a probability of epsilon, I, I do this here. And otherwise by a probability of one minus epsilon, I do this here. So if by this, if, uh, by, if this is not true, so in this case here, by 10% chance, I would choose the action just randomly between zero and three. So here are the actions I described by numbers between zero and three. So zero means right, one up, two left, and three down. And, uh, and but if, if this here is true, then I choose the best possible action according to my current queue. So and maybe this code here is a little bit confusing. Um, so what this here does is I, um, I want to know what action at the current state gives me the highest Q value. And, but first let me, and here I make a small explanation. Um, so this Q is now eight times seven times four values. Um, so for a state, I have an array of four numbers. Um, and um, uh, and what this, this function here does, if I have an array, in our case, it will be the values of Q. Um, this function here gives me the position of the highest value in this array. So for example, here, the, the highest, the maximum value of this in this array is nine. And the position of this is two because we always start with zero, one, two, yeah? So whenever I have this code here and I have this A is some array, then this will be, give me just the position. And so there, therefore in, in uh, here, this is the same code, but instead of A, I have this array here because this is the, um, the X coordinate and the y coordinate of our state. And this here will give us the action uh, with the highest Q value, because the action also corresponds to the index um, of the, the value. Yeah, anyway, just believe me that this code here gives us the, the action such that the current Q value um, of Q for this state and this action is the highest. Okay, and then what we want to do is we want to go in this in this direction. So we want to to change our state by um, depending on the action. So for example, if the action we choose is zero, this 
this means we want to go to the right. And going to the right means, um, so if I have um, uh, a state, for example, which is three, four, then going to the right means I want to have uh, the array uh, four, four, because the first coordinate is the X coordinate. And, but I need to be a little bit careful because if I'm at the border um, of the campus, uh, I need to say what, what I want to do. Um, and I decided in this example, maybe there are much better choices. If, I, if I'm on the right side of the campus and I go right, I just stay in the same state. Um, so therefore here I take the minimum um, of going um, to the right and the maximum x values uh, minus one. Um, so this makes sure that this value here is never larger than, than a seven minus one. So I can never go more to the right than, than, than possible x values. Yeah. So, so maybe this part here is just cosmetic. So, but the main idea is if I go to the right, then I add one in the first entry. If I go up, then I add one in the second entry. If I go left, then I subtract one on the left entry. And if I go down, I subtract one in the second entry. And this max and min is just to, to not jump out of the, the campus. Okay, so now this will give a new state. Um, so this is again an array with two entries, which is our state. And now we want to calculate uh, the reward. So we want to check if the new state is a combini or if then the reward will be one. And if the new state is a, a lecture, then the reward will be minus one. And otherwise it will be minus uh, 0 0.1. Yeah. So, um, and now this, this big equation um, where we update our, our value of Q. So the Q at our old state for this action, so this is the, the table Q here, is now by the factor one minus alpha, we just take the, the old value, plus by a factor of alpha, we now take our reward. So if you compare this with the formula, it's exactly the same, plus, gamma times, so this is the discount factor, and then the, the maximum, oops, um, uh, the maximum of the, the Q at the new state. So this here, this is an array with four entries. For each action, we have a value of Q in the new state, and we want to take the maximum of these. This is what we had in the formula. And then uh, we say, that our state is now the new state. And from here, it goes up again to the while loop. And we check if the current state is now combini or a lecture position. I mean, this we could also already check here. I mean, here we could also jump out of the loop, uh, but yeah. Okay, are there questions for this part of the code? So this is now uh, one episode. So we start at a random position. We do this and then walk around the campus. And at some point, um, we end up at a combini or a lecture hall. And, and then this game is over. And while we walked along the campus, we updated the values of this Q function at all the points where we passed by. OK. And then at the end here, I just have a function. So this is not important um, for understanding the algorithm. This is just the function which draws everything um, as before. Um, so maybe this is not so important, but of course you can ask questions uh, on this part of the code if you want, but this is just cosmetics. And so now uh, let's try uh, what we get. Um, so here I just write again the the number of the size of our campus and the position of our convenient lecture, because then we can change it. And then we initialize our queue. 
and then we draw um, our uh, our current um, policy. So in this case, if we initialize everything with zero, then the policy at the beginning is quite stupid uh, because it always says at any point we just should go to the right, which is maybe not the, the best possible uh, um, policy. And then what I do here is um, for, in this case, one maybe 1,000 episodes. So 1,000 times I start somewhere, walk around until I end up at the terminal state, update Q, and then do it again. So if I do it 1,000 times, so let me run this. Then after 1,000 episodes, I get um, this policy here. And you should check that this is actually one possible optimal policy. Um, also clearly, here is not we don't just have one optimal policy. For example, um, at this position here, uh, we could also go to the left and then go go down and here, right? But for example, if I just do it, let's say ten times, then so this is at the beginning and this here is after training. Then you see that if we just do it ten times, then still. Um, our value is not really good. So at some points, at a lot of points, we still just go to the right, because maybe here we, we never started in these 10 trials, um, and, but we see some changes. Uh, but of course, uh, here, for example, this would be quite a stupid policy to just uh, go left and right here. Yeah. And yeah. Um, so maybe um, by yourself, you can maybe play around with these things. So you can change everything here. Um, you can make the campus bigger, and you can also add different positions for lecture. Um, maybe let's just see how this looks. So now there are x, there are uh, 10 things here. And we could, for example, here at position uh, 9, 0, um, add a convenie, nine zero. Maybe also run it, let's say, a thousand times. And then, well, here you see that um, because now we have a much more states that even after 1,000 episodes, maybe there are still some stupid um, policies here. Um, so here, uh, we shouldn't go up. I think. So maybe let's take 10,000 times here. And then we see that this uh, looks indeed uh, better. That no matter where I start, I should always get the shortest way uh, to a green um, place. Okay. And, and maybe next time I want to maybe recall this a little bit, but then maybe go to a game, maybe some simple game like tic-tac-toe or something where we maybe can try to understand how this works if we want to play against ourselves um, and maybe try to find the best strategy in a game. Uh, but yeah. But then I would uh, stop recording and then you can ask questions if you want. <laughs>